Welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, April 8th. Uh, we are chaired this evening by our Board Administrator, Marie Kropelka. Marie, please take it away. Okay, the first out of a business tonight is to have an organizational meeting for the purpose of electing a chair and a vice chair. And at this point, I would like to ask nominations from the board. I move that Dan Dunn be made chairman. Second. Second. I move to close the nomination. All in favor? Well, first we have to move to close the nominations. Right. And then they need a second. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Motion to motion close to it up. Close all nominations for chair. And I'll do a roll call vote on each one, right, Juliana? Right. Okay. Joe? Yes. Yes. Steven? Dan? Yes. Yes. Okay, now we'll take a Maybe. vote. No, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. I move that Diane Mahan be named vice chair. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Um, to close nominations. To close Second. nominations. And okay, now we'll do a roll call vote on Diane's vote. Joe. Yes. Kevin. Stephen. Yes. 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 Kevin. Yes. Okay. All right. All in, um, since all nominations are closed, I'm going to turn this over to Mr. First Dunn. To Congratulations. Kevin's motion naming me as vice chair. I thought we, we just, just did, didn't we? No, you actually oh. kind of both just vote for closing it, Marie. Now okay. you need to actually, we have to actually vote for Dan. Okay. And Diane, so. All right, so we'll take another roll call vote from Mr. Kiro. For, for yes, for Diane. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Mr. Byrne. Mr. Yes. Dunn. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, but Mr. if it goes on much longer, I'm changing my mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so a roll call was taken. The organizational meeting is dissolved. No, no, now you have to do Diane, honey. Sorry. Oh, I, th I thought we just did Diane. No, no just do it again, Diane. Right, uh, Diane. Now this is for vice chair. Right. Okay, so now. So two votes originally. They would have closed the nomination. Sorry. So now we need two votes, two votes. one for the chair, one for the okay, vice Okay, so now we're on the vice chair. Yes. Okay, Mr. Kuro. Yes. Mr. Byrne. Yes. yes. Mr. Dunn. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Really, all right. So nominations are closed, and now I will turn the gavel over to Mr. Dunn. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you. Once a year, you get to do this. Thank you, everybody. Uh, now you know who we are. <laughs> um, I'm really excited to be chair. It, I think, uh, and I, my, to my colleagues, um, I really look forward to getting feedback from you about both how I should be running a meeting and uh, anything else uh, that, that comes under the chairmanship. Uh, I know how I want to run the meeting, but at the same time, that uh, one of the things that's really important to me is that everybody feel like they get a chance to say when they think it's appropriate. So if for some reason I'm cutting you off or I'm not seeing you and you're raising your hand or whatever, please let me know and don't be shy about just saying, Dan, <laughs> and uh, I will listen, and I really, I'd rather have the feedback than um, hear afterwards that I screwed up somehow, so please let me know. Uh, of course, we had elections uh, this past weekend, and I would like to congratulate our returning member, uh, Mr. Kevin Greeley. Thank you very much. Perhaps nice our senior back. member, maybe? Oh, he by far senior, by <laughs> far. <laughs> yeah. uh, Congratulations to everybody who uh, won in all of the other elections. I want to congratulate all the candidates who ran and didn't win. Uh, the races are what makes it important. It's not just the winning of it. And I also want to thank all of the um, people who worked on the campaign, uh, excuse me, on the elections, because uh, eight to eight is, you know, and setting up and breaking down is a long day, and I want to thank them all for the work that they put in on Saturday. I, I think everything, as far as I know, it all went well, <laughs> but what do I? <laughs> All right. All right, so after that, I'm going to move on to our consent agenda. Uh, we have appointments of new election workers. Mary Cooper, Patricia Muldoon, Margaret Sheehan, Nancy Shields, Phyllis Snowden, Timothy Hughes, Kenneth Hughes Jr., Kenneth Hughes Sr. Uh, we have a request for a one-day beer and wine license uh, for April 30th at the Robbins Memorial Town Hall for the, a fundraiser for First Step Group. Um, Patsy, I, I see you're here. Are you here for that, perhaps? And we've got uh, the vote, the sale of the wine at farmers market. Excuse, at the farmers market, we have Still River Wineries and Coastal Vineyards. Is there anyone here who wants to speak to any of those items, Patsy? Thank you very much. Um, on the one-day uh, beer and uh, wine license for the First Step Group, 
um, there's two purposes to that party, and it's actually going to be in the hearing room, not the auditorium. Oh, thank you. Um, as you, I think many of you know, Elaine Shea and Mary Dice and Sula Hay were the three co-leaders of the First Step Group for many, many years, an unbelievable number of volunteer hours. And they retired last year, and we were planning to have a celebration to honor them just before Bill Shea uh, became quite sick and then died. So they, they did not want something to acknowledge the wonderful work they had done, so they agreed to do it if it was a fundraiser for the First Step Group. So that's what the party is, is both a fundraiser to support the First Step Group, but also to acknowledge the wonderful work that those three women did. And then um, I just wanted to mention for the wine uh, vendors at the farmer's market, there is a third vendor uh, that I thought would have his application in by the meeting tonight, but it obviously didn't get here, so I would assume you'd be able to have that at a, a subsequent meeting. Um, last year was the first year that we had wine vendors. We thought it worked very, very well, and we uh, added an, a nice feature to the farmer's market. Thank you. On the consent agenda, do I have a motion? I move approval subject to all conditions as set forth. Second. Any further discussion? Anyone else here on any of those other items? On the motion by Mr. Kira, second by Mr. Byrne, consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 5-0. Next up, Friends of Arlington Council on Aging, accomplishments for 2012, and a report, uh, excuse me, approval of the upcoming road race. Mr. <coughs> Budden, Arthur. Sorry. Yes, sorry. Fine. <laughs> Uh, please introduce yourself and, t and tell us about the year. Okay. I'm Art Budnick. I'm president of the Friends of the Arlington Council on Aging. And uh, <laughs> about this time each year, we <coughs> come before you to have approval for a 5K race. But we also thought it would be important for the community to understand some of the things we're doing and doing together with the Council on Aging and doing for our senior citizens. And uh, when we first started, Back in 2009, our first contribution to the Council on Aging was $1,250. Over this past year, 2012, for our seniors and to the Council on Aging, we were able to donate $10,000. And uh, we're growing a bit. We're not a huge organization, but we're trying to do things that are important to the community in general. And uh, a few of the things that we're helping to provide to the Council on Aging and for our seniors are things like evidence-based health and wellness programs and training for their geriatric nurse so she can get out in the community and help seniors with things like uh, nutrition and chronic conditions. We're helping to finance the Walk the Rink program. Uh, we're helping with uh, special um, funding for uh, seniors in need at, at, at different points in time. There's a, there's a small program which won't be all that large, but it is a lot of fun. And this, we've done it for two years. We've just finished it over this past holiday season. And it's a stocking stuffer program and a holiday gift program for seniors in need. The Council on Aging and uh, the social workers identify a set of seniors that will either be spending the holiday alone or frail or in financial need. And we reach out to the community, to donors, to decorate and build <clears throat> Santa-style stockings that we provide to them. And they populate them with gifts that are suggested on our website. We filter them and go through them that way. And we make sure and supplement them with things that we think the seniors really need. Um, when that's done, we then reach out to another set of volunteers, which included the Arlington Police Department this past year. And I do want to thank uh, Officer Smith and Rebecca Wolf. We're very good in helping to coordinate us uh, and to get out these stockings to the different seniors and things like that. And it's very endearing. Uh, we get our elementary school students drawing up holiday cards for them. That's all included in it. And then when volunteers are delivering them, they get to interact with the senior, and uh, it's just a very warm experience. And uh, the police seem to enjoy doing it, and we are at least helping, get it, helping to get it out. And uh, we enjoy working on the program, too. And it's just an example of one of the small programs that we have that is helping to outreach to the community. 
the major effort uh, or a complicated effort for us is our 5K. Mm -hmm. And that's why we try and get approval for it early on. Um, I know that many of you have volunteered. I know that Mr. Byrne and uh, Mr. Chapeldine had done some running. We're really grateful for the attention you had placed on the race. It, it, it made a big difference. And I remember Mr. Coro lugging water around and helping us <laughs> dole out awards. So, no, it, it's an important program. See about we appreciate this it. Year. Yeah. Yes, sir. And certainly, I don't mean to interrupt, but on the race, uh, last year, Mr. Chapeldine challenged, I believe, was this the race that you did? Yeah. <laughs> How did that turn out, Mr. Chapdelaine? Do you remember? There was one town employee who, uh, who bested me. Who bested you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I believe you had to buy, buy lunch or something for a hundred people or was no. it? <laughs> I, I owe that one employee lunch when the new Monotomy Grill opens up. Uh, I nice. So, excuse me again, but <laughs> this year, anything to say or any challenges? <laughs> or you, uh, see, because if I wasn't on the cane, I'd be there, brother. I, I would be there. I might be driving it, but, but so are you running it again, though, Adam? I will, and I think Good the same you. challenge will be out there. Good nice. for you. And, and we appreciate it. Uh, I, I will train between now and then. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So I just wanted you to know we, we do appreciate the community. That, the funds that are raised... Those are local funds. It's not coming from the Fortune 500. It's coming from Arlington residents and the small businesses in this community. And we appreciate them a lot. And uh, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be able to do a lot of these things. So thank you. And we could use you for volunteers again this year <laughs> and get out there and start practicing your race. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I know that you want approval. Do we, so do we have the full paperwork we need to do the race, or are we just giving a general approval for the day with the apl actual application later? Or You I should have a five-page document, which uh, is what I've been submitting in the past. We want to move his report, and yeah. then we want to move approval of his request. Do we actually have the request, though? Yes, it's we the, do. Uh, the fifth okay, all right, cool. If you read down into it deeply, it's buried in there somewhere. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the sentence that says, we request <laughs> approval someplace. <laughs> So move receipt and approval. Second. All right. Any further discussion? On motion by Mr. Greeley, second by Mr. Carroll. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank Looking you. forward Thank to you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, request. One space on, on street overnight parking, 17 Lidwood Street. Is Eleanor Riccardi here? Hi, we all got your application, and uh, it's been or the police traffic and parking unit, Officer Rateau recommends that we approve it. Do you have anything else you want to add to it? No, nope, that's it. Ms. Mahan? Um, I, I did go by as part of the parking subcommittee, um, and based on that and anyone else's observations and the report we received from the police and fire department, I'd like to move approval. Second. Is there any further discussion? We always want to draw attention to the fact that this is um, – doesn't work for when there's a snow emergency. He's <laughs> hitting all that good stuff. <laughs> uh, motion by Mrs. Mahan, second by Mr. Curo. All those in favor say aye. 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 Five zero. Thank you. Thank you. Have good night. Next up, Patsy Kramer, please. Armor, uh, Farmer's Market 2013. Um, I'm asking for approval for the Farmer's Market to be at the Russell Carmen parking lot for the 16th year. Um, I think the farmer's market is something that's a really proven success in Arlington. We have a wonderful number of people that come for access to really healthy food. Um, we are one of the oldest farmer's markets uh, in the state, um, having been around for 16 years. And I think one of our successes is because uh, we have 24 vendors and 11 of those 24 are farms. Um, so we feel very strongly that the farmer's market is about food. It's not about crafts and arts and things like that. So we're hoping that you would approve us to be there this year. So moved. Second. And Mr. Greenlee. Mr. Chair, excuse me. Patsy, highlight what you do with the seconds. I think that's just spectacular. The it seconds really market, is. I as agree you with you. It, yeah. For many years, um, we've had a program. We're starting in August when the far harvest is at its its best is that we have a crew of volunteers that take uh, food that the farmers donate, that they're not going to take back to their farms to use the next day. And we take it to Monotomy Manor, and it's sold at Monotomy Manor for a dollar a bag. Um, people 
uh, go through a line and choose out of all of the uh, harvest items there what they'd like to use. It's uh, been phenomenally successful. I think we do allow people who don't live in Monotony Manor also to come to that seconds market if they would like to. Uh, but it certainly gives the families that are on lower income the possibility of having access to really wonderful fresh food. It's fantastic. Any further discussion? Uh, motion by Mr. Greeley, second by someone I forgot. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, five zero. Next up, Patsy, talk, uh, your request about a change in parking for the farmer's yes. market? Last year, um, we really had parking rage at the farmer's market. I witnessed one time. Yes. <laughs> um, I, not first of all, up. I want to say that, that we are very grateful to the selectmen for allowing us to be in the Russell Carmen parking lot. You don't charge us rent. Uh, I don't like to say it, but other communities do. And so I've always, and many patrons think that you should allow people to come without paying the parking meter fee. And I always tell them that you're very supportive of the farmer's market in that way. But w what happened last year was that there were more uh, parking uh, uh, meter people that had been hired. So there was much more diligence about watching that whether people had uh, paid for a parking meter. So once people got the idea that there, there was a possibility of getting tickets, they were very good about trying to buy the ticket, and that is where the problem was. Mm -hmm. um, the, we were always told that it's the people problem, that it isn't the meter problem. There are times when it's a meter problem, and there are times when it's a people problem. What happens if there's a people problem, then it takes forever to figure out what they did wrong. And in the meantime, people are standing in line. I, I said in my letter, I very clearly remember a very hot day. There was a lineup of seven people. At the end of the line was a woman who was very pregnant with a little toddler standing in line, patiently waiting to try to buy a ticket. So I wanted to suggest the idea of trying something on a, a one-year basis to see if it would help, and that is to sell a, a pass mm -hmm. to the farmer's market, a seasonal pass. And what I'm suggesting, since we're there for 21 weeks, I'm suggesting that we sell a seasonal pass for $10, which is 50 cents for an hour. Most mm -hmm. people shop within an hour. And that it would be some kind of a placard that they put in the windshield which would have their license plate so that the parking person could see that the, the, what's on the placard relates to that car so people aren't passing them around. Um, my feeling is that if people forget to put it up, that's on them. Mm -hmm. uh, if they lose it, that's on them. But it gives them the opportunity for $10 to be able to uh, readily park and uh, shop at the, at the market without having to stand in line for tickets. Um, I don't know if that's something you would entertain trying for a year. Uh, I'd be happy to implement it if you would like and certainly to turn the money over to the town or if, I guess if you prefer it to be implemented somewhere else. Uh, uh, Mrs. Mohan. Well, I, actually, I think Mr. Byrne, oh, we Byrne. did it at the same time, okay. so I think he beat me. Um, no, I, I like this idea. It's creative um, and I know it can be you know, a nightmare at times in the parking lot. Um, I was wondering if the patrons that go, are they generally there on a week-to-week -week basis, and this is something that they could really utilize? Or I think many people come on a weekly basis, right. And I guess my feeling is for $10, if people don't come on a weekly basis, it, it may be still to their advantage to not have to bother. And then if they you know, only come two or three times, they don't have to buy the, the placard. But many people really come very faithfully. Mrs. Mahan? Um, if I could second Mr. Burns' motion, and I was there during one of the parking. Yeah, oh, oh, you know, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, he said he's willing. To, I'll wait to the rest of the board. But I think this is a great solution. Um, and I do go every week. Invariably, I buy something. Sometimes I don't, but I just like to go and see everybody because it's such a great community it event. Really is. And yeah, it yeah. sort of turns into a mini. Uh, you know, here's your selectman. <laughs> Tell me what. And one of the things I was there one of those days that that line was building up and. They gave it to me and gave it to me. Good. Patsy calmed them down, <laughs> and they vented on me. So I think this is a fantastic um, solution to this. Um, Mr. Carroll? Um, I, I'm interested in trying this. I, I, my understanding is you, you're looking for the, the permit to be, um, to be valid 
during the operational hours of the, of the, of, of the market only. Yes. So I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely interested and in, in willing to try this. However, um, I, I do have to say that in, in reading the letter, I, I was getting upset, not, not about anything, just upset seeing that this problem cropping up in another, in another way. Um, I think an, a lot of you know that, that I, I've been meeting with the, um, the new center merchants group. We're going to be hearing from a representative from the, the merchants on our next agenda item. And these issues have been coming up again and again. Uh, apparently, we had one of the meters was, was down for two weeks mm -hmm. recently, which, which is a problem. Uh, there are some problems with signage. Um, the merchants there would like to come in to us soon with, with a list of specific issues and proposals. But I would like to, I'd like us to act on this, on this creative uh, solution for the farmer's market. But I would like to follow it up with, with another motion surrounding the same issue, the, 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 the root cause of this issue, which is around the parking. So I just want to put that right, right out there. Mr. Greeley? Well, uh, I'm not nuts about it, but I'm going to, Patsy wants it and the farmer's market wants it, I'm going to go along with it. But I, it doesn't solve the problem. I mean, the That's meters right. still exist and everybody else during the day. And if I'm going to the farmer's market, I'm going to go for the 50 cents instead of the $10. <coughs> you know what I mean? So it, it's... Uh, but, I mean, it, I, I really hesitate to say this, but I almost would rather cordon off a particular property section of it for farmer's market parking and have someone collect at a gate or, you know, kind of a thing. But uh, let's give this a shot and see what happens. But it's not solving the problem. If, it, if the meters are a problem during farmer's market, they're obviously, as we've just pointed out, they're, they're a problem all the rest of the time. So we've got to solve the problem. This doesn't do it, but it will at least for your... Uh, hours of the farmers market but your enforcement is going to be tough too you're going to you know you, yep. you, you're going to get need more staff now to do this and you know because they have to come in and park first come to you get a ticket right is that or well, are we it'll be a pass it? for the whole season so they'll right. you know we'll certainly publicize this on our um but who's giving them out who who actually is giving i out? assume i would be okay you know the, at the market there's a manager's table yeah and so that's where people would purchase them Yep. I, when Patsy and I had talked about it, I said that I would work up with her and we would come up with a permit if you approve it, similar to what we do now for the one day pass that we give out. And then have, like she said, it would have to coordinate with that person's registration. And the money Patsy would collect it, then it would be turned over and we would turn it over to the parking clerk. Um, and it would just be for that 21 weeks that we would do it, but Patsy <coughs> would be responsible. I'd get her the tickets and she'd be responsible for selling them. Mm -hmm. Uh, do we have a motion? Move approval second. for the one-year trial. I'll second. All right. Um, so, um, Adam, I, I remember, so we talked, I, I recall, so first of all, I should say, I agree with uh, everyone on the board that this, it, it, we have a temporary solution, but it's a temporary solution to being, Patsy's being creative about a problem that's driving, you know, hundreds of people, if not thousands of people nuts. <coughs> and uh, we talked about the meters before, and then I, we started, and I think one of the things that we, looked at was how it affected like the whole um, downtown, the shopping districts and what we were going to do with parking and so on and so forth. Uh, where did we leave that? So uh, where we are today is TAC has begun gathering parking data yeah. in the business districts and the capital request uh, in the FY14 proposed budget that will be before the town meeting to fund further parking studies in the business mm -hmm. districts, which takes into account what, what you're talking about, uh, possible on-street paid parking and mapping that into one strategy with the lots. Uh, so uh, a couple things happened in the interim. Uh, the parking <coughs> clerk had put in a capital request to replace just the meters mm -hmm. in, in the lots. Um, however, working with him, we reduced that to a smaller request to replace all of the controls and issues that are broken on those meters uh, before FY14 to hold back on purchasing new meters until there's a larger, more comprehensive plan. Uh, so th that's where things currently are. Uh, but we, we need to see, working with the parking clerk, that that interim fix is implemented yeah. and is effective. So did I just hear you saying, though, that <coughs> given on our current plan, we probably wouldn't even replace them in FY14? Correct. We might want to think about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Let's talk about that again. Yeah. Every time I think about that, I, I get stressed about it. Mr. Chair, yeah. And isn't Mr. Gilligan looking into a meter issue as well, or is that a different issue than this? 
We, we have no, this, it's the uh, same issue, and, and I think that is what really defines the issue that there's, um, you know, mul multiple heads of responsibility yeah. in managing this parking mess. Yeah. Um, so ac actually, Mr. Kira was, I think, was alluding to a motion he would yeah. make. Yeah. Similar yeah. Conversation. Have we, vo yeah. we voted the we trial? Have, no, we haven't. Okay. Pl I haven't pl sorry. Yeah. Um, I guess maybe I should. And um, just two sentences. Yeah. I think what everyone's alluding to is the selectmen do have a subcommittee. Yes. I know I'm on it, and I. Mr. Dunn was, and now I, I, I don't know who's on it now, but it is Mr. It, Mr. Greeley <laughs> and Mr. Chapdelaine, Mrs. Kropelka, Mr. Gilligan. Sometimes yeah. Mr. Olson comes, and we have varying play. So um, you know, we need to. People were given tasks, so we probably will be meeting shortly, probably in okay. the middle to end of town meeting, to, for p possible next short-term steps. Um, maybe low cost something that we can get done and c get people to say because basically FinCon saying well we need a big solution we don't want to waste money but if we can come up with something that's palpable but right. uh, but that I'm done so let's pull the let's vote on this and then uh, I'll hear what Mr. Kerr's next one. so all those in favor of the motion by Mr. Greeley seconded by I don't know by Mrs. Mon seconded by Mr. Byrne and uh, Mr. Kerr I'm gonna have to get better at that part all those in favor say aye aye aye, aye. aye. Five zero. Okay, Mr. Kara. Okay, I think that Ms. Mahan was actually going the direction that I was planning. Because I, I, I guess it's fair to say I, I somewhat vented my spleen to the manager over some of these issues um, when I when I was going to a meeting last week and had to walk all the way across the lot because the meter was broken again. Um, in meeting with the center merchants, they've pointed out we have a lot of inconsistency in signs down there. I, I actually took a picture and sent it on. Well, we actually have two signs right next to each other. One that says there's a three hour limit, one that says there's a two hour limit, and they're right next to each other. There are other very short term issues. Mm -hmm. And I know that the, um, the merchants group has been in the process of compiling a, a spreadsheet with a list of very specific issues. Some are policy and some are just maintenance. So what I wanted to do, I wanted to move that um, we ask the direct the parking subcommittee to meet and to include the, um, the center merchants, as well as TAC, because I know TAC is undertaking the comprehensive parking study for an, just an, an update and a discussion, as Ms. Mahan said, about short-term, um, potential short-term approaches uh, to the problems and possible policy recommendations back to the board. That's my motion. Second. Any discussion? Uh, just, just one. I mean, it's. Um, I agree, and let's do it. But uh, th there should be no confusion. We are the parking commissioners. Absolutely, it's our responsibility. So, yeah. I think that the re I think that the reasoning and, and Stephen reports to us as parking clerk. So there's no question that this yeah. should, we are, we have to take care of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Five zero. Nick, uh, thank you, Patsy, for bringing that up and being creative about it. Uh, next up, Patsy, with a one-day liquor license application packet change okay. proposal. Wearing a different hat as yeah. event coordinator for our venues in town. Um, this special one-day liquor license uh, policy, uh, I wanted to just uh, ask for your thoughts on maybe making a couple of changes that make a difference in how we carry out the events that we do. Um, over the last year, the Alcoholic Beverage Control Commission has been offering some training programs, and because of that, they came out to Arlington and offered it to us. We realized that um, we, we shouldn't be thinking about making some changes to this. So the first one that I wanted to ask your thoughts on is number three. Uh, the sale and consumption are limited to inside of the premises. It also says, if allowed by board vote, outdoor sale and consumption may occur only in a defined outside area away from public ways. Well, we for many years, um, with the, the three venues that we have, we have the, the Town Hall, the Whittemore Robbins House, and the Robbins Memorial Library, all three venues have made use of the very beautiful public gardens and the lawn of the Whittemore Robbins House, and we have had um, uh, alcohol served there. Um, and it is, really is something that is a, a real selling point to uh, people using our venues. Um, the gardens are beautiful, and uh, it really is a, it offers a wonderful feature. So, uh, and 
On June 7th, we're having Town Hall's 100th birthday party, and the plan is to have the hors d'oeuvres and cocktails in the garden, if the weather allows, and then come in for the program. So I'm hoping that you would entertain the idea of officially voting to allow that. Um, the second thing I wanted to just suggest, which is really an editing Ex issue. Yes. Actually, Pat, uh, yeah. sorry, on that first one. So am I correct in saying that the black, in what you gave us, the black is what is currently the policy mm -hmm. and the red is what, and so currently it says, if allowed by board vote, outdoor yeah. sale and consumption may occur only in a defined area, outside area, and away from public ways. Yeah, to be honest. And you're asking for us to authorize well, it in a general way or? I, did you ever, I, you may have taken a vote and I'm not aware of it. I don't know if you ever officially I just voted. want to be clear about what you're asking. Yes, so I'm asking for you to vote to allow the uh, town hall gardens and the the lawn of the Woodmore Robbins house to allow that alcohol be served there. Just in a kind of, so during an I, I actually said during contracted events. Okay. So I think that specifies that it has to be an event that someone has contracted with us. It can't be somebody just showing up and drinking a beer on the lawn. Okay. Uh, let's uh, let's go with one and then keep going, Mr. Greeley. Yeah. So on this, but Patsy, I, I don't understand what's different than what three states, which is the board can allow that. But you've never taken a vote to do it. See, it says there, Perhaps if allowed by asked. board vote. Perhaps we haven't been asked to, for the No, event. I didn't. I honestly didn't realize this till now. But that's what I'm saying. So as long as it's asked, what do we need to change for? I think that in general, these events um, are approved without a board vote. No, no, they have to go through us for a one-day license. Yes. Okay. No, so but, there, but there are events, there are private events that the, the events that we do that don't ask for a cash bar, okay. and, you know, like a wedding, for example, people don't do a cash bar at weddings typically. They right. serve alcohol in the garden. So they don't come to you. For a liquor license? No. They don't have to get a license if they don't do a cash bar. Is that true, uh, Madam Council? If they're serving alcohol, they don't have to have a license? I don't know about that. The, the license requirements pertain to the sale and delivery of alcohol and okay. uh, Generally, any delivery outside of a private home is presumed to be a sale, but where there is no exchange of money, such as a wedding, something like that, um, then it's not subject to licensure requirements. But, but the same, by the same token, any change in the policy wouldn't apply to that type of event. That would have to be right. separate. This only applies to where you get Oh, the okay. So does that mean we're not breaking the law? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Spaces, but a purely private, non cash event that doesn't need to be licensed wouldn't be subject to any of the ABCC or the board's requirements on the liquor license. Would be subject to any requirements the board and manager put in through okay. the policy that you administer. Okay. Mrs. Mohan? Were you all set? Um, I think I am. I, first of all, I'm very uncomfortable. Um, I understand having outside events and alcohol served. Um, the lawn adjacent to the Robins Whittemore, as well as inside the town hall and other premises that we rent out. But um, I have a question for town council, just where that's so many people from the public do go through there. And then my issue would be, well, is it a matter of, of policing it so that we coordinate it off and say these public gardens have been contracted because people are, have, have uh, booked the event and they're having alcohol there. And I'm just really uncomfortable. To me, you know, people on the lawn by the Robbins Whittemore House, people inside the Robbins Whittemore, people here for a wedding town hall, I'm comfortable with that. But the amount of volume of people and family and parents that go through the town hall gardens, um, I would not be be inclined to support that right now and my question would be because I think what I'm hearing is as long as it's not a cash bar and there's not cash sales they can do that but where the town hall gardens is public land similar to I couldn't hold a birthday party up Robins Park and say well it's just all of us and all my family and supply alcohol doesn't the same apply here in the town hall gardens that's the first well um, I, I want to clarify it's not just whether it's a cash bar or not to look at you know, some kind of events, for instance, you buy a ticket to the event, you get drinks, you know, someone might say that because you're getting the drink for free, that that is, you know, just not be subject to the licensure requirements. I wouldn't agree with that because I would say, you know, the ABCC looks very broadly at any type of admission price you may be paying. So I, I, I don't think it's that helpful to talk about cash bar or not cash bar. Mm -hmm. um, although definitely a wedding that had a cash bar would be subject to the licensure requirements. 
But um, in terms of what this board and the manager you know, may choose to allow on town property, that is absolutely up to this board. Serving alcohol in a park setting would be a little bit different because there is a bylaw that specifically um, prohibits the consumption of alcohol or open containers in park and recreation land that wouldn't apply to town hall garden. Mm -hmm. But certainly um, in, in terms of permission, mm -hmm. the permission to use town hall garden under a contract for any type of event could include that type of restriction. And what I don't know because I haven't seen it, mm -hmm. um, what the current policy is, I, I expect it would mir mirror the would the reverse be true that if a majority of the board wanted to say we want to treat just town hall gardens the same way we treat parks and the like that there is no we do not allow consumption of alcohol on that public land I'm just not comfortable um, and I want to hear from the rest of my colleagues on the board but I'm just thinking of you know all the messages that we get out and um, you know I know as a high school coach you know, sometimes we've been in venues where, you know, you could have alcohol and there was a very small minority and we stopped that because it's just the message that it sends out to the kids if you're going to a sports event or any other kind of, you know, music drama event, you know, the, the adults can't wait two, two and a half hours. So and the reason I say that is where the gardens are so um, used by the public, you know, young and old, and, and I can't see, you know, I can see people walking through, and but, but anyway, so I would be inclined to look at, if you could also look at the reverse. Anything? I mean, I, I think Ms. Mahan's concern is well taken, but it, I think I, I feel that um, if the area is, is well cordoned off and that that has to be a, a piece of this, just, just like, I know it's not just like, but you know, when we had this discussion about out, so outdoor consumption of alcohol at our uh, restaurants, we were very strict in the policy about the requirements to cordon off that space from other spaces where, where um, folks are passing. And we may want to be a little bit more um, specific in our policies about that um, requirement. I don't know where that would fall, though, because if you say that this, this policy doesn't doesn't apply. Juliana? Maybe what might make sense if it would work for um, Patsy would be uh, to have this board put this item on again and consider the policy that's in place and maybe decide what the board wants to do and it could adopt parallel recommendations whether there is a license required or not a license required. Yeah. As um, I think Mr. Greeley pointed out, currently the board could vote in any particular, if any particular license application requested that as part of this event, we want to have serve alcohol outside pursuant to the special license. The board could vote to allow that, it's just, it's, as you say, because this issue wasn't front and center, it hasn't been asked. Yeah. Mr. Greeley? Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's kind of why I, I would recommend, but I, I like um, uh, town council's recommendation. I'd recommend we just leave it as it is, because, for example, the uh, upcoming uh, um, 100th anniversary of Town Hall that a few of us here are working on, uh, we will be using all of the gardens, but we are going to have people at each one of the entrances, so people will not be able to, on that particular, for that particular reception, walk through. But uh, a bar mitzvah, a wedding, yes, they can. I mean, there wouldn't be any, there's no... Uh, so I, I would like to re-examine that, but I, I really think each event should come to us so we understand what the security and, you know, uh, you know leave it the way it is at this point. Uh, um, I just want to add, I do agree with Kevin that, um, you know, with certain events that we, you know, get a packet for and we see an application, I am comfortable having, you know, allowing the sell uh, or alcoholic beverages to be sold in the gardens, but with things like bar mitzvahs, weddings. I'd, I'd, I'd even like to see an application for you know, those type of situations as well, which we currently don't. But I think that you know, Juliana's request is the best way to move forward. But Joe? But am I hearing that we really don't have any authority to, requ to uh, require an application for private events like that? Uh, not requiring a, an application for a liquor license because that's set by state law, but certainly the board has authority to decide you know, to use. what extent you're no. going to allow use of okay. that property. Yep. Okay. So, um, I, so I will say that I don't, sh I, I don't share, I don't think that's the same degree of concern that some of my colleagues do. Uh, 
I, I like the fact that we rent out town hall. I like the fact that we should rent these spaces, and I think that using the gardens as part of that rental, uh, you know, it's, take, it is a pro, it's a private thing. I mean, excuse me, it's a public uh, facility. It's a public building. But taking a few hours a week and saying we're going to generate some revenue out of this, I, that, that doesn't that doesn't stress me out at all. And if part of generating that revenue is that it is used for the sale responsibly for alcohol. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not sweating about it either. Uh, and especially the events we have. It's. It's one of those things. It, it ain't broke. So I'm just not. I'm not worried about fixing it. Yeah. I. I would like to just add that we have been doing events here for eight years, and one of the things I always tell people when I'm showing them the garden is that it is public space, but that our experience is that people have been very respectful when they have seen an event, and they don't come through they they really sometimes they look over the wall to see you know the bride and what she looks like but so far our experience has been really quite positive and private events also have to have the liquor liability insurance general liability insurance they name the town of Arlington as additional insured the bartenders have to be tip certified so really the same regulations are in place as the ones that that you approve for a cash bar it, you know, we we're very rigorous about that so do I have a motion could that include that Juliana also provide what I said as possible reverse language just because I just know that you know when I'm out on the field with the kids and with the parents I get a lot of grief talking about you know drinking and what we do out there and I've gotten a lot of how come every time the selectmen talk that are talking about more package stores and now they're putting you can drink in the theaters and you can drink outside the restaurants and you can drink you know and it seems like like I want to send that that's my concern and that that's where and now what I'm envisioning is the times that bar mitzvahs and especially weddings and the like would be on the weekends and that's when parents and kids and, and every, you know they're well traveled going through the gardens whether you hit the library and you cut through the gardens and sit there and I, I'm just thinking of the message that we're selling that you know we're now going to say we're going to say and I, I agree with Robbins Whittemore and the lawn adjacent to it and everywhere else where we have it but basically to take a very well traveled and use public garden, the, the hours that bar mitzvahs and weddings happen on the weekends, on the nights, that's when the public will be going through. And that's why I'm a little. So I, if my colleagues would indulge me that Juliana come up with the language that says the reverse, that we're going to treat town hall gardens as we treat our parks um, in Arlington. And then we can have an up, um, you know. So you, I don't, are you making a motion? Because I don't think we have one yet. Well, Mr. Cure, I was asking if he would add that on. If you, Did you were making make a motion. But you're looking for a strict prohibition on the on, uh, of use on those spaces. I'm looking for if whatever language is, exists on the parks. Yeah, but that, that it would apply to that. That she just draw that up, and then I, I get one more shot, shot at convincing you all. Yeah, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for that. So, sorry. have you made a motion, Mr. Curran? Uh, no, I'm not. Yeah, I don't think we have a motion yet, Mr. Greeley. <laughs> yes, I'd like to move that we leave things as they are and we ask uh, town council to look into the private events and the authority but i believe we should keep with let events come through here and if they want to use public space let them let them apply through us to do so leave it the way it is don't make don't don't just allow it period in my opinion Second. so i'm recommending no change other than we're, we're asking town council to look into our authority or whether we should exert some authority over private events more so than we currently do. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All, yeah. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Five zero. Okay, Sorry, Patsy. Two, <laughs> two more items. Um, I I think we should put. I think. We oh, can I just do my motion? Uh, separate. Oh, separate. Well, you, you can say no. You can say no, and then yeah. I'll just ask the town manager to do it yeah. as an individual board member. But I'd like to make a motion that while. Ms. Rice is looking at regu uh, rules and regulations and wording and language on this particular item that she look at writing up, that she create language similar to um, the language that currently protects or governs um, Arlington's parks regarding um, drinking. Is there a second? Second. Is I'm just asking, if, if you all, I mean, I can just ask the town manager. I'm just, all I'm saying is can she put it before us and you can, whatever. Is there a discussion? I have some. My, my discussion is uh, I'll vote for I'll support. I have no problem with talking about the language. Right, that's all. I the mean. odds that I will support you when that actually very comes thin. Out are very thin. Are very slim. It's fine. All right. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you. Five zero. I want to thank my colleagues. All right. Uh, Pat, so Patsy, I think um, let's. 
I, I think we should leave these points that you've got here that you wanted to change, and let's put them as a part of Juliana's okay. discussion, because I think we should really just do it all. Fine. There's too many open questions about what the actual policies are for us to, to do that right now. Fine. Okay. It is it, any disagreement? Okay. Uh, all right, moving on. Vote. Yusuf Jefferson Cutter House Lawn for first Fridays of the month. Yeah, Mr. Chair, could I intro this? Yes. Um, th thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so as, as I mentioned, um, there, there is a nascent uh, group of Arlington Center merchants that have been meeting every uh, week or two. Um, uh, this uh, initiative to try to pull together, really kind of modeled after what, what we've seen down in uh, East Arlington and Capitol Square, where there was really, there's now a really active merchants group for, for that particular business district. It's uh, been spearheaded by Barbara Popolo at uh, Derby Farms um, with some support from the Cambridge Savings Bank as well to get going, look, look at some... Uh, branding uh, and look at some initiatives at uh, business promotion. Um, so you, you have before you um, a, a request um, uh, for use, <laughs> here we are, use of some of the land under our jurisdiction uh, for First Fridays, um, which uh, I, I think I'll, I'll let Mr. Faniff, um explain. Uh, so we have this evening um, uh, Bill Faniff. He's uh, one of our, our newest um, uh, business people in town. I think you may have seen the feature in the Advocate a mm -hmm. few weeks ago. It, it frames with a history. Sure. Um, so we have his letter, and uh, with your indulgence, I'd like to invite him up. And I think Ms. Olszewski from Arlington Tourism and Economic Development Committee is also here to uh, say a few words to Excellent. it. Excellent. Uh, Mr. Frenov. <clears throat> Thank you. Again, my name is Bill Fanoff. Um, I own Frames with History. We've been uh, in our space over there at Toronto and Mystic for just under three months now. And, you know, kind of being the new guy in the town, I was interested to, to see what I could do to, to try to promote business, you know, selfishly for my own business. And then I was made aware uh, of this Arlington Center uh, Merchants Group. And like uh, Joe said, we meet every couple of weeks. And our goal is basically to um, figure out ways that we can drive uh, people, drive traffic to Arlington Center, and then once they arrive here, show them that there's some pretty cool stuff here. There's, there's good shops, there's good restaurants, there's entertainment, there's theater, and, um, and just try to promote the town in, in a similar way that you might find, you know, people go to Lexington or go to Concord or Portsmouth and Newburyport on a larger scale, make it an, an, an occasion, make it a day to come here. Uh, so through our meetings, one of the things that we've talked about at length is trying to make a First Fridays celebration, if you will, uh, kind of an event, uh, First Friday of every month. And some of the ideas that have been tossed around, you know, where we would stay open late in the evening, eight or nine o'clock, possibly in the summer, um, and maybe run some specials, try to maybe run some promotions. This past month, uh, the region and Arlington Center did a tattoo promotion they had little rub-on tattoos at the store and then Leland from the region they kind of did a thing where they gave out free tattoos because it was Tattoo Nation playing over there so that type of thing is, is what we were looking for um, but the consensus is we need to do something other than saying we're open come on down we want to have some some type of event and our thought was to to use the land in front of the Cutter building to uh, put up a tent or two or a few tables possibly combining that with uh, some entertainment, maybe an acoustic guitar player, a singer, a, a, a kid's show of some kind. And uh, Jennifer at the chamber said she'd like to have a table out there uh, to kind of promote what they're doing. And then A-Ted maybe could do the same thing. And just kind of make it, you know, people drive up and down Mass Ave or Mystic Street, you look, oh, there's, there's something going on there. There's some tents, there's some signage, there's some banners, and there's a reason to come. And then when they come over there, you know, we've been working on a... A, uh, a postcard which is going to have a walking map with all the merchants around the center that we can hand out and share with people this is where the stores are this is what kind of sales are happening you know go go check us out um, we have some banners that we're making we also have a Facebook page they're working on a website uh, and all these things are just to, to try to bring people here and, and keep them here um, so we would uh, we'd basically like to know what do we need to do in terms of getting approval if there's any you know licensing if there's insurance issues um, if we were to have, say, something like a, an ice cream vendor or a food vendor, what are the requirements as far as the health department to, to possibly incorporate that as well? And I don't envision this to be where the whole green out in front is full of, you know, chaos. I envision maybe six to eight tables, tents, vendors uh, at, at a time. Um, so, you know, just what do we need to do from here moving forward if we can use the land and, and how do we go about to do that? <clears throat> Mr. Greeley? I'm not sure I have a lot of the answers, but the first thing is thank you very much 
for the efforts you're putting in here with your group and as well as, uh, you know, of course you're trying to help your own business, but that helps the town, so good for you. I can do it. Um, I would like to move that we do approve that they have the use of that land, but I do have a question. We have something in our packets from ATED about a $25,000 warrant that you have for an information booth. Is there any was, also it's there? a different location. That's not right at? No. Oh, where's the information booth going? Over by Uncle Sam. Oh, the, across the street. Okay. But I believe all we have, and then I believe, but Juliana will help me here, that all you would need to do from here is go to the Board of Health, I think, to find out what the regulations would be in terms of, like, serving food or whatever. I mean, it, they're already licensed by us, mm -hmm. so that wouldn't, if they're serving food. So I'd like to make that motion, or, and we'll see if there's anything else I need to add to it. It would be a temporary food permit. <coughs> the Board of Health gives out, you know, with some regularity. Mm -hmm. Does Mr. Greeley's motion have a second? I'll second that. Second. Um, Will there be an open mic night for singers? Uh, are you interested? No. <laughs> I just always ask. You could go out and uh, jam a Java so the cats in the neighborhood aren't yelling. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a great idea. I'm uh, really excited about it as well, and thank you uh, for all your effort. And I know uh, I see the acu uh, acoustic guitar players. I know that Mr. Kiro and I have talked many times about getting some music down in oh, the yeah. center. So, uh, Kudos for making I that understand out. that Representative Rogers is a guitar player, so maybe we get him down. <laughs> well, and you know, this has been done before. The chamber yeah. did sponsor music on that common a yes. number of yeah, years. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sorry. No, I really like this work, and I hope that uh, Mr. Fields, the new economic development coordinator, can uh, get involved in this when he uh, comes on board and uh, kind of see where this can lead to. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I just want to thank Mr. Fanoff I, and just let you know that I got four emails. The selectman's agenda gets posted to a variety of lists, Arlington, Summer Street, Sunnyside. Um, and I received four, and I'm, I know my colleagues hear from people, I received four emails basically saying, what is this all about? And I, I just type it once, I, just because I can type fast. I typed your letter explaining to it, and all four were really excited. Um, and one person to the point of, you know, was saying, who would be the contact person if I want to get involved? an Arlington resident, I assume that would be you in the information that you provided. Or why don't you leave with Marie if any resident co contacts, whether they go through ATED and they say, gee, I'd like to help them work out, or they say, gee, you know, people were saying, well, what's the acoustic? Is it going to be, you know, an Arlington resident can come in and do it, stuff like that. So if you can work out, um, you know, if people are interested in participating, volunteering, offering their services. Um, who they should connect to on that. Now, I always equate, if I get four emails, there's at least 40 people that think mm -hmm. it's a great idea. Yeah, well, that's good. I think I will be the contact. I mean, Barbara runs, kind of runs our group, but when we were talking about this, she basically said, do you want to take this and run with it? So that's why I drafted the letter that day, sent it to Joe, and he got it to you guys. <clears> so, um, you know, I'll be kind of moving forward from here. And, and on that vein, I mean, what do we need to do from here? And, and you know, what are our limitations in terms of space, you know, uh, if we have an acoustic guitar player, can he bring an amplifier? Does it need to be quiet? You know, are there little things like that we need to be aware of? Um, you know, yeah. for Juliana, do you have the exact answer to that one or no? Uh, yeah, I mean, there there would be certainly um, maybe if um, Mr. Fenneff wants to work with Marie and I can, mm -hmm. I can work with her as well. But um, you know, the board could tailor a vote saying every Friday from this time to this time from yeah. April to September or whatever it's going to be. Um, and then just vote on that one time because <coughs> has access to that um, area. In terms of an amplifier, we'd have to look at the noise abatement bylaw, and it may be something that would have to be ended by a particular time. Yeah. Um, I think maybe 8 p.m., uh, but I, we could look at that. Yeah, I think that everything you're talking about there within the space, uh, I am i don't know how to tell you what the right limit on the space is, but I think the answer is be prudent <laughs> because there are, there are other things. Mm -hmm. Mr. Greeley, would you be interested in changing your motion just to specifically say uh, that it's 2013? And the, okay. Yes. Uh, May through September, is that what you'd like, Mr. Fanoff? Uh, Fanoff, I mean, is maybe that correct? Fanoff. Yeah. Fanoff, Fanoff. Yeah. Fanoff. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. If or off, it's either way. <laughs> um, so the first Friday starting in May 2013, ending in October 2013? Yeah. Uh, I'd like the first to, Friday of every month, not every yeah, Friday. Including October, because I think yeah, we could, it'd be a nice time yes. to be outside. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, so that's, October. yes. Time frame on that as well? That is my motion. Um, should, yeah, so Mr. Byrne would like is asking whether or not we should add a time, like an end of time, to it. Mm. How late do you want to? Would you think see it going? 
eight or eight thirty, I think would be fine. Or, or so I would say I'd to call 10. it nine or something. Yeah. We'll say ten to give them, you know, yeah, just yeah, yeah. Yeah. you know, if people. I think after dark, I don't expect we're going to have any lights or you know yeah. anything like that. So I think dark might will be absolutely the time. So whether that's quarter nine, nine o'clock, I don't think it'd be any later than that. Yeah, you probably want time to break down. So ten yeah. is probably yeah. Yeah. yeah break down time. The beginning. Okay. You probably want a beginning time in case there's a conflict. Uh, five. Okay. Five to nine. Five to nine. Does that get great with everybody? Five to nine. First Friday from May through October. For 2013. But for the year 2013. Yep. Any further? In the town of Arlington. <laughs> <laughs> Any further God's discussion? Green Earth. No. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 So, the, so the rest, they'll work with you, but yeah. it's all regulations and bylaws that already exist. So, okay. yeah, I think it's just Oh, I apologize. Angela, I apologize. Angela, come on up. I apologize. I, I was sitting there saying, I was looking at you and I was like, and then we got in the conversation and I forgot to, to ask you. That's uh, okay. Please. Okay. Um, well, you know who I am. Angela Olszewski and I chair ATED. Yep. Um, so I just want to say to, we're glad that you voted um, in favor. And while we didn't take a vote specifically on this at our committee meeting. I mean, obviously, we're putting up our visitor, well, we're hoping that we're going to put up our visitor information booth, and we've gone out there with our tent. And, um, you know, the, on the committee, we're really um, enthusiastic about the idea about getting people to stop and telling them what's around. And I actually went down to First Friday, last Friday, and I thought, gee, it would be really good if there was something going on so people would know that the stores are open and that you know, people would stop. So really happy about your vote. Can I just put in a quick plug for Patriots Day weekend while I'm up here? Okay, Saturday, noon to four, Jason Russell House. We have activities on the lawn, weather permitting for the kids, tours, the Monotomy Minutemen, a special lecture at 4.30 on the dendrochronology results that dated the Jason Russell House. Um, parade is at two on Sunday. The Russell House is open for tours from noon to four. Monday morning, get up early with the Minutemen, go raise the flags and do the ceremony at the burying ground. 7.15 downstairs starts. <laughs> and 11.30, be here. Um, we're going to be waiting for Paul Revere and William Dawes to come. We have a bunch of activities going on in the auditorium. It happens to be a little cool out, no problem. We'll be inside having fun, following the riders on Twitter so that we'll know, um, you know when they're arriving. So thank you. Thanks, Sam. Thank you. Angela, I apologize for not bringing you up earlier. Anything else into that issue, or should we move on to warrant article hearings? First up, Article 11, Bylaw Amendment, Use Regulations and Public Property. This was a 10-voter article, and it was put forward by, um, among others, Gordon Jameson. And Gordon emailed us, and he said that he was unable to join us tonight because of family health uh, oh, no, not health-related. No. <laughs> but family-related. Exactly, yes. family-related. I read that really briefly, <laughs> quickly. I apologize. Uh, but anyway, Gordon isn't with us, so uh, Mr. Greeley. Well, uh, but I believe this is a no-action warrant article, and the next meeting is town meeting. So um, unless someone wants to, I, I'd move no action Second. on this. Unless, because from what I understand, uh, CONCOM has... Uh, Remove their desire for this. That's what I understood. Is there anyone who wants to make a case? I, I'm afraid not. I mean, I, I think I would like to, I would like to give uh, uh, Mr. Jameson the, the 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 benefit to come before us. But I, I agree with Mr. Greeley. I think we've run out of time on this. And um, yeah. uh, so frankly, no my action. inclination is towards no action on this. Also, so yeah. I think I can share with the board some helpful information. So when Mr. Jameson is before the board. Uh, the discussion at that point was that he would meet with me to discuss some of the interests that he had with this warrant article and then we'd <coughs> back and report back to the board. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did have that meeting, and he really outlined uh, three main priorities uh, that he hoped to start discussions about with the filing of this warrant article. One was the creation of uh, a gun buyback or surrender program linked in with more information on the website about gun licensing within the town. Uh, so. I've had the discussions or have, have had discussions with Chief Ryan, and he's begun to have discussions, and they've started to fruit some, some, some benefits. So first of all, uh, he had a meeting today with members of the faith-based communities, mm -hmm. and it looks like this fall uh, we're going to have a community gun surrender. Uh, mm -hmm. will happen. There's no uh, specifics yet, but it's moving in the direction of happening. Uh, he's also, as part of our website redesign, working with our public information <coughs> officer for enhancing and making more robust what we have available and how 
just how easy it is to access in terms of our gun licensing and any firearms regulations we have on the website. The second issue that Mr. Jamison raised was uh, us taking a look internally at policies we would have in regards to employees bringing firearms to the workplace. Uh, and I've started conversations with both town council and our HR director, Karen Malloy, in that regard. Uh, and I've shared that with Mr. Jamison. <clears throat> the last piece was um, the consideration of restrictions on uh, the carrying and use of firearms on town property and in town buildings. Uh, that um, we've internally started talking about, not much progress has been made. Uh, I don't want to speak for Mr. Jamison, but I, I, I believe he has said that he understands that this might not be something that action is taken on prior to town meeting mm -hmm. or that action is even taken on at town meeting, but rather that a discussion could begin and possible action taken down the road. Mrs. Mohan. In um, my memory, when Mr. Jamison appeared before us, he came in and he said, I've come before you, the school committee, park and rec. I'm just using this as a vehicle to get the discussion happen, happening. Happen if you vote no action in terms of our report to town meeting, as long as I know that you know we're working on it to address it in different ways. And we be began that with the meeting with Mr. Chaplain and what the uh, police chief is doing. And I know, um, I, I'm, I'm not sure what for, further follow up there was with Park and Rec, but I know they said that they would start to address it. So basically he was saying, I just put this in to get the discussion going and if, if there was no action, that's fine. As long as there was no action on not doing anything. And it seems like we are just. Mm -hmm. Thank you. As far as the third tier of what the, the town manager just mentioned, he talked about the, the use of property under our jurisdiction. It seems to me we just asked the town council, really in the context of alcohol, we, we I think most of us had intended to, to uh, look at potential policy um, changes and how we can better control uh, the use. It seems to me that it would be totally appropriate for us to consider that as part of, part of that, um, uh, those policy recommendations when they come back to us. Okay. And that we would not have to take action. We, we could take no action on the, the warrant article itself. So we have a motion of no action on the floor. Is there anyone here who wanted to talk about, I'm not seeing anyone who wants to be here about that. Is there any specific, something that anyone would say or attach or, okay, all those in favor of no, recommending no action, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 5-0. Next up, Article 12, Town Meeting Electronic Voting. Eric Helmuth and Moderator John Leone. Congratulations, Mr. Leone, on your re-election. Thank you very much. Congratulations to Mr. Greeley on your re-election. Thank you, sir. And to you. Thank you. So you, this is your second trip, but this time you actually have recommended language for us. We do. Yes. And just briefly, I wanted to respond to uh, a point that Ms. Mahan raised last time. Um, thank you for uh, suggesting that we consult the commission, the Disability Commission. I will be meeting with them next week, and we wrote into our report our intention to work with them next year should town meeting uh, approve the um, enabling and funding of, of this equipment in the purchase and the evaluation of it in recommendations for accommodations. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Do you want to just give us an overview of this language that you've got yeah, here? And I'll turn this over to, to John. He's, he's had it up. Yeah. Um, the committee of West Beale, Adam Ostrom, and myself um, worked on the bylaw recommendations. Um, what we've ended up doing was using the current bylaw that we have and inserting at certain places, which if you have the same one I do um, on page two, You'll see it in um, italics, the language that was inserted, uh, basically allowing for the use of the electronic voting. And the, you'll see it says at the option of the moderator. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's in case the machines aren't functioning. And also for like the no action votes, it'll just be too quick to say no action, boom, and move on as opposed to taking the 30 to 40 seconds to um, use the electronic voting system. Um, we did run this by uh, town council. She actually made that um, suggestion to put it at the election of the moderator in there so it would give us that right. The only other thing we did, the other two substantial things, we got rid of the um, no standing, um, a show of hands. We've never used a show of hands, it's been in our bylaws forever so I'm just cleaning up the bylaw and getting rid of that. We added in language at um, Mr. <coughs> Oster's uh, recommendation to the committee that if the electronic tally is used and it's less than six votes, which means five, same as for a standing vote, five people rise, will show on the screen who voted for what. So people can confirm that their vote was properly recorded by the uh, system and also to eliminate any debate if there was a um, 
question about how, how far does it pass, who voted for who, just kind of instantly eliminate the roll call need. And then the final thing we added was our big goal here is, well, accountability. Uh, make the representatives' votes accountable to the constituents. We're going to have this thing. It, it imports into a PowerPoint presentation of some sort, which we can have somehow magically go over to Joan Roman and she can put it up on the website the next day. Uh, we wanted it to be up there for three years and Juliana added um, language that, or s such longer time is required by law. We don't, frankly don't really know how long it has to be up there. <laughs> That's where we put it in. Yeah. Um, I haven't been <coughs> able to find anything that says this has to be displayed anywhere. We know um, <laughs> town clerk has to keep the records ad infinitum, but this isn't paper records, so it's electronic data. She'll still have her records down the end of the hall. But this will be there for the voters of Arlington to see how I voted on a particular article next year when it's my time to run. So it, we really kept it pretty simple as we could and just gave it the ability to do so. Um, do you have any questions about it? or Mr. Greeley? So thank you for your work, both of you and your committee. Thank you very much. I, I really think this is very exciting. Am I right? We're looking to just to have this vote at town meeting and then actually use it the following year. Is that the calendar goal? Yeah, or? if I may. Um, Finance committee um, gave us ten thousand dollars for next year to rent the system for as many nights as that'll last. Um, so if the meeting decides they want to go forward with this and they vote to approve and change the bylaw, I'm going to have Mr. Tosti table everything between that and Article Forty something, whatever it is and vote the money right then and there and be done with it. It's because we're going to be on a roll of approving it, and we'll just approve the money and then go right, go right back to them. But again, for the following and town meeting. effect next year. Okay. So our goal for this committee, we're going to rename ourselves the Implementation Committee and figure out how. Okay. How are we going to hand these things out? How are we going to collect them? How are we going to do this? The nuts and bolts of it. And the reason I ask is because uh, I have always followed the Charlie Lyons principle, which is in my own precinct, mm -hmm. when enough people are running, we don't run because we as selectmen get a chance to speak at town meeting. Right. But it, because it, if I won, it means I'm eliminating someone who wanted to be a town meeting member or if there were three only running for the four seats, but this time there were four. But obviously now I have to run for town meeting in order to participate in this system. Is that correct? Or... Can selectmen be shown as how they would have voted or something? Oh, no. Okay. You, if you want to vote, you'll have to be a town, town meeting member. member. Yeah. Which yeah. is the case now. Yeah. You know. No, I understand. But now you're talking about publishing who oh, voted exactly for what. Correct. I don't want people to think I'm not taking votes on things. But, you know, right. um, our hearings, unfortunately, mean nothing anymore in terms of when we hold warrant hearings because... Mm -hmm. uh, people who, uh, uh, Mr. Loretti, who sponsors Warren articles, doesn't even show up here for hearings anymore. So, uh, but, so anyhow, I move favorable action on this. I think it's very exciting. Second. Mrs. Mahan. Just a procedural question. Yeah. You're basically taking the um, bylaw, Title I, Article I, Section 10. On the right hand side, you provided all the language that you've added, which is under the proposed Article Number 12. Correct. Um, just a procedural thing. Do we need to take a vote where you've deleted well, in four sections to make it procedurally, I, or is that we don't have to do that? For clarity and ease, what I did was just take the existing one, mm -hmm. throw it out, and put a brand new one with all the language inserted, as opposed to after, sec after sentence one, the word vote, insert this. And I'm just saying, as fast. town moderator, you're yeah. you can think of two people that I'm thinking of that sometimes find one little word or something that they, it's their day oh, in the su sun to shine. This guy's got some program that tells me exactly if I got it right. Uh, I mean, Document comparison and word. Yeah, that. Okay, but what I'm saying is procedurally, we're, we're voting to add some language. We don't have to vote to delete. No, we don't. We're just out. deleting the entire one and yeah. we're inserting mm -hmm. a brand new one. And and as long as you're comfortable with that. You know what I'm saying? Someone's going to get up and say, Mr. Honorator, I read it here, and you added this language, but in this line you took out, um, there shall be a roll call vote. That's what I'm saying. Is right. you feel comfortable that we just vote this language and we don't have to take a vote to delete that language? Correct. I was just going to offer what I could do when I draft the comment if this board was favorably, is I could take this language if you could 
provide it electronically, yes. you may have already, um, and just put it in the comment itself so people can see. That would be great. I just want to stop a possible 20 minute discussion, mm -hmm. if you know where, where I'm going. gone through the town meeting procedure committee. We met um, mm -hmm. last Wednesday, also discussed it, and they endorsed this 100%. I'm definitely, def I'm just yeah. envisioning. <laughs> Mr. Carroll? Yes, yeah, so thank you. How many nights does 10 grand get you? <laughs> uh, we think it'll, we think it'll probably be seven. Seven? Yeah. Um, well, that's, that, that's that fantastic. Depends, that depends it on the pricing next year and what system we decide to rent. Because it gives you a great, it gives you a great bar. Because if people decide they really like this and they know that the meter is going to run out if they they don't act expeditiously, right? I, I know you hate to move things along expeditiously, Mr. Moderator. But <laughs> 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 um, so I think that's I think that's great. I, I think that this is a step forward for really transparent government as well. As we all know, boards like ours, we all publish. Um, the minutes of our meetings, our votes are always recorded on, on everything that we do. It makes absolute sense that, that the uh, legislative branch should be the same. Um, and while I understand that not everything gets recorded, so much more will be recorded and, and uh, be more okay. transparent. If we just do a tally, where a tally is 118 for 12 against, the next day how we voted will show up. On exactly. The <laughs> yeah. Exactly, and whether people stayed stayed to the bitter end as oh, well. I'm going to adjourn know. by tally. Yeah. Question <laughs> <laughs> to adjourn. I don't know. Yeah. Well, discretion. We'll call that to be an electronic vote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Please stay till the final hymn. Um, great. Well, so thank you very much. I really appreciate it, Steve. Uh, no, I, I completely support this as well. I did have a question. Um, has uh, Dave Good been involved in the conversations? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And yes. Uh, how is it going to be administered at town meeting? So the rental situation, which is the first crack at it, mm -hmm. comes with, it, with the vendor that we would currently expect to, and this would go through town procurement, you know, mm -hmm. to make the final decision. But the, the, the rental comes with a staff person from that vendor to operate the system, which the first time around isn't such a bad idea. Uh, the, uh, if we purchase a system, then the <coughs> IT department would be the custodian of the equipment, which would, of course, be secured. They'd have to make sure that the batteries work. They'd have to set up the computer. And there would be training by the vendor to do it. So the, his anticipation is that one, someone from his department uh, would we'd budget for them to be at the meeting to actually operate the equipment. That's great. I am. No, I, as I said, I support this. I just know that he can be quite busy at town meeting between all the yes, presentations. Yes, right. Given, and so I didn't want to put we, we, thing we, we just, And he met with us, and then, well, he met with the committee, and John and I talked with him. And uh, yeah, he, he agreed that he's doing PowerPoint jockey for the for the presentations is, is plenty. So how this would work would be a laptop that's got the receiver that would receive the votes and that would administer the votes. He would have another laptop for the PowerPoint presentations, but there'd be a video switch okay. to, to switch between the two and that uh, another person would be operating that. And that's important because the vote is so important you want to make sure that you have a dedicated person on that machine who's not also trying to mess with, with okay. everyone's PowerPoints. And, awesome. and, and Dave is a town meeting member as well, so He's doing the PowerPoints sort of mm -hmm. semi-voluntarily for us to get it within house mm. as opposed to having a volunteer do it. So we don't want to overburden him with mm -hmm. yet another job. Right. Of course. Yeah, does right. the person in the audience want to comment? <laughs> he does. <laughs> Mr. Harrington. Then I'll come back to the board for final comments. Um, Sean Harrington, Precinct 15. Um, most time members I've talked to have actually really, really liked this idea. I'm not up here to, you know, grant, you know, you can calm down. I'm not up here to be opposed it, but um, I didn't, I haven't seen the uh, <clears throat> language that they've used. Um, my curious, so from what I'm understanding, if can I direct the question to the moderator? But just put, all right to the chair, and then we'll see. Oh, to goes. the chair. All right. Yep. Um, so it's up. So from what it seems like, it's up to the. It's going to be to the moderator's discretion whether or not we use the electronic voting. So when it comes to the roll call vote, which is a question I've received from a couple of people. Are we removing it completely? Are we just leaving it there? Or that, that was the question that a couple of people have had. And I would so the roll call vote, the, you can mm -hmm. do it electronically if yes. the moderator chooses. Well, yeah, but, that. but if, the, the, if the moderator chooses not to do it electronically, then it is still recorded as we've done it in the past. OK. Um, so I, I think that basically, the, if I, having heard the moderator speak on this issue before, what he wants is it, it, he'll use the electronic if it's available. Yes. It's available, it's going to be visible in the hall, it's going to be visible afterwards. If for some reason the electronics fails, we have the fallback of the way we've done it in the past. Okay, that's what I just <clears throat> wanted to make sure because one of the things that 
I'm really active with is bylaws, and I always want to make sure that they're, you know, you always want to make sure that uh, they're good. And these uh, two gentlemen here uh, seem to be doing a fantastic job with this. Um, the other question <clears throat> that I had is, uh, which I, I'm back there, I didn't, I didn't quite hear it that well. Uh, will the uh, vote, while it's taking place, uh, be projected on a screen or projected for TAMI members to see, or not until the next day we won't see it? Mr. John, do you want to talk about um, how you plan on doing that? The, the, if it's a tally vote, it will not be projected. You'll just have the numerical designation of what was voted on. If it's a roll call, we haven't decided on that. That would be one of the things we would figure out next year. Some towns, about five or six towns use this. Some towns do it as the votes are being taken. Other towns, they wait till everybody's had their 1 30, 40 second voting period and then scroll through the number after the vote's locked down. So we haven't decided which yeah, way okay. we would want to go with that. Okay. And yep. if I may, just one final question. Go for it. Um, I do know of town meeting members, I'm not going to name names, that don't have computers, that are not really tech savvy. Are we going to have uh, time for, are we going to have prior to town meeting if we um, put this in for, uh, as it's been talked about at all, that we'll have classes or some, or a time when uh, some of our town meeting members who aren't tech savvy is able to learn how to use remotes that way they don't go in and say, I don't know what to do, or? Eric, Eric do you want to handle that one? Or, sorry, uh, John. Yes. Do, do, yes. One, two, three, yes, no. We, okay, okay, that's what yeah. I want. The, an the answer is yes. The other towns have, have run training sessions and um, put together training videos. We anticipate we would do something very similar. I will say that when we observed uh, 200 plus town meeting members of all ages and all backgrounds use this in two different town meetings, they did so without any apparent difficulty, and one of them was the first night they used it. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the systems are, I think, with the proper background and training, are, are not too no hard to use. Sean, I'd actually invite you and other people who, if you haven't seen it yet, or to other town meeting members. Um, Eric has put together a blog mm -hmm. that has videos from some of these, and you yes. can watch these votes. I didn't even know there. about the blog. No, so. no I'm, 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 I'm trying me. to educate you, <laughs> so other people as well. It's actually pretty fascinating to watch them. Uh, to, to it. I mean, it's actually watching paint dry, but at the same time, once you've seen it dry, you're like, okay, that's the, the paint. Well, that's dry. the process of town meeting in general. So, uh, yeah. but I mean, it sounds like a great idea. I just had a couple of questions, and thank you very much. I'm, I'm satisfied. Yes. More from the board. That, that website is, may I say the, the URL? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, www. No, not no W's. Votevideos.wordpress.com. Votevideos.wordpress.com. Votevideos.wordpress it sounds paper? fascinating. <laughs> it, it will be, a link to that will be in our report, which is very oh, nearly complete, actually, after this vote, it is complete. Okay. Uh, did we have a motion? Yes, I made the motion. Dang it. I'm not doing, getting this right. All those, <laughs> and Joe seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. I have a procedural question. Is you go, are you, we are a town meeting committee. We're mucking with town meeting business. Are you guys going to uh, endorse our recommended vote as the committee, or are you going to put forth your own recommended vote? Or how? I kind of thought. Yeah. How would you like us to do it, John? Uh, I would prefer if you um, endorse their recommended vote. Endorse our recommended vote. Okay. Because then it, it appears to be coming from the town meeting. We keep our so that's my motion. Okay. That's my motion. <laughs> Thank you. Is that it, to endorse the recommended vote of the question. committee. Is that right. what you mean? Yeah. With the yeah. town meeting recommended committee. Okay. So that, which means then that when we make our, a re, when we <laughs> make our opening town meeting motion, it's going to be incorporating the votes of the finance committee, the ARB, the board of selectmen, and the town meeting procedures committee. The town meeting, no, the, the electronic, uh, electronic voting, voting study committee. Oh, excuse me, but you know what I? Yeah. yeah. So that'll have to be a part of that motion then. Yes. Please. Okay. Okay. Was that what you're asking, Joe? Well, no, it just strikes me that this is not the only warrant article that's come before us that's been a recommendation of a town meeting committee. Yeah. This year. He's well, the only one who asked. That's true. <laughs> you haven't I'll changed our second. <laughs> we want yeah. to keep moving. So, I'll yeah. second that. <laughs> yeah. yeah we're, uh, we're mucking around with town meeting procedure, and we should, this yeah. town meeting, vote to keep it all in house. Thank you. We appreciate it. Are you okay? It. Do you want another vote, or are you okay. all set? All right. Good. Yes. Sorry, I'm going to just direct a question. Please. You want me to send you the draft? See if you're happy with it? Yeah. Of the. Of your vote, yeah, and I'll send you yes. our final one tomorrow. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, we'll email. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on. CDBG. I think this one's mine, or is this yours? Uh, uh, 
So, I hope everyone got enough copies of the proposed budget. I wanted to complain Why about that. Why do we that? have so many? What? So let me tell you a story. So we're spending 11 times as much money as we thought. <laughs> so on Friday morning, the, the Community Development Block Grant Subcommittee was meeting in the town manager's office when, without any warning, the lights went out. Oh. And I will note, among other things, the elevator stopped. With? With <laughs> the town clerk <laughs> contained no. within oh, the man. elevator. <laughs> I know we shouldn't laugh, but she can laugh, so we can all laugh. Right before the election, even. <laughs> it was. And so we sat there and we said, okay, uh, well, well, now we're going to take this vote. Okay, we got it. We're ready to put it into the packet. Okay, let's put it in the packet. And then we realized we had no power, no computers, and no printers. And so I think what happened is Carol sprinted down to the community safety building and did the printing. And I think that when that happened, things went a little awry. Well, and that's I, <laughs> I, I can tell you, the, the, the last I saw these, Carol came into her office where I was standing and said, yeah. How many copies do I have? I said 10, and she had, oh, I have 10. I, yeah. I don't know how 100 were produced. Anyway. I, I can't answer that. <laughs> So anyway, back, now that we're no longer talking about how many copies of the piece of paper we have. <laughs> uh, so the committee consists of myself, Steve Byrne, the town manager, uh, Carol Kowalski, and Anna Witten. Uh, and uh, we have met, I think we met four different times, or it was three different times okay. over uh, the last several months. This is a very difficult set of uh, decisions that we have to make, and we, and we really struggle mightily with it. Uh, what makes it, so first of all, you have a lot more requests than you actually have money available. And then the other thing that happens is that the amount of money that's coming in is decreasing because of cuts at the federal level. So you don't even, ha uh, you know, sometimes you can say to yourself, oh, we'll do a shortcut and we'll level fund everything. You cannot level fund everything because there just isn't enough money. So we, uh, so you have to figure out what you're going to cut. Uh, in particular, uh, we are restricted to the amount of money that we can spend. Uh, spend in public services and public services I think is where the committee agonized the most over what changes we were going to make and one of the things that I said in particular was uh, so it's clear that the federal government is spending less and is going to continue to spend less on this type of thing uh, on this type of program and we have to be smart and can and uh, anticipate that that's going to happen and so you know we're sitting there in these meetings and you can see uh, Adam sitting there saying well you can see after we figure out, like, I suggest something to be cut and everyone explains why it's, you can't do that. And Steve explains so what he wants to cut and everyone explains why you can't do that. And then you see Adam saying, okay, well, I'll have this particular person. Maybe they can take that role on. And I think we have to steal ourselves and try to avoid doing that. Because what that is, is the federal government stopping doing the work and the town government picking up the work. And we can only do that so much. And so... The strategy that I'm really recommending, in particular in the public services area, is that we have to identify private charities that we can hand these off to. That we can say, we've been handling this particular responsibility and we've been helping out this particular program. We need to identify specific charities uh, that will help out. And so Steve and I and the town manager have each individually reached out to specific charities that we have, that we have particular, like you can look at some of these names and you can imagine a few groups that you could say, and I would like to, you know, if we get one of these groups, or I should say when we get these groups to agree to that, we should have them come in, we should shake their hand, we should kiss them on both cheeks. We should thank them for what they're doing and then, you know, cross that off as something because we can't support it anymore. So, uh, all that said, so, uh, on the public services, we had to, uh, we had to cut uh, several of the... So, so it, we had to cut not only just what was given... Uh, these aren't level funded. These are cut from previous years on a, on a number of the items. And uh, on... I guess I'm not going to go through line by line unless there's particular questions. Steve, did I miss anything? Um, no, I think that covers it. And just that the cuts that we're dealing with are real. And I think that talking about public services, I mean, those are the you know requests that really help everyone in the community. And that's what makes those cuts so hard. And I think that um, as a group, we did, you know, a re we really had a thought out discussion on what you know could be cut and what I what has attractiveness for uh, private fundraising, and just uh, I think that this is very sound way to divvy up this money. Yeah. I'll actually say that the 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 method we used on that, it, or at least I should say one of the methods we used was we wanted to protect <coughs> things that were about health 
and uh, whereas things <coughs> like that were related to scholarship or activity were more likely to be cut than things that, were that sustained you know, health and so on and so forth. Adam, did I miss anything? No, I, I would just add that I think it was a very well, uh, well run process. It was in depth. We were very, I think we were very analytical about our decisions and I was very pleased with the outcome. Mrs. Mahan. Just one question um, under public services. Mm -hmm. um, item six, code red, my daily call program. Mm -hmm. No money was requested, nor was it allocated. I'm just wondering, you know, why that was in there. Um, is it something <laughs> that they asked for money in years prior? They're not going to mm. do it this year. They may next year. Is it something that is folded into something else? I'm just curious. So in the 2012-2013 in the budget year, uh, they had requested $2,500, mm -hmm. and um, what we found out through this process was that $2,500 amount was a two-year request. Okay. So they have funding for both the current year and next year to cover the Code Red My Daily Call program. I just wanted to make sure that program was still or how you were addressing it. Thank you. Yep, that one did not get cut. Oh, one, uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Joe. Sorry. No, no, I, I was just going to say, I mean, um, you know, our vice president is fond of saying, "Show me your, uh, you know, show me your budget, and uh, you know, I'll show you my, you know, your values." Um, and you know, obviously, this is a very important safe, safety net uh, project. So I have no doubt that these were agonizing um, choices. When you were looking at the applications, were you looking at the? I'm sure you were, but just to confirm, looking at the makeup of what the money, specifically the money, was going to be spent on. And my, the reason my question is. You know, are you feeling pretty confident that in some of these where the allocation was cut back, that the service is actually able to be um, to be provided, and that the allocation that is being recommended will actually go to good use and will be able to be used? Or are you, do you know if you're cutting into certain fixed costs or whatnot? I don't. Sir, okay. I, I would say the the services we cut were, were mainly uh, scholarships, jobs, 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 recreation scholarships, yeah. and. Our understanding of each of those programs was a reduction just meant less people served, not an elimination of the program itself. Right. Yeah. So you didn't, I, I didn't state it very eloquently, but I was just wondering if a tipping point was hit with any of these, to your knowledge. So. That's what I understand. No, that's what Mr. Greeley? Move recommend favorable action. I mean, and I hate doing so, but I think you worked hard. Everybody's been reduced as far as you can, you know. Uh, on this uh, one, actually, not an easy job. Yeah. I apologize for interrupting. In this case, it actually, I don't think it's favorable action. This one, we actually take the vote. Okay. So Do I remember correctly that the town manager has a vote on this yes, one? Yes, he does too. Yep. It's, uh, that's five and the town manager. <laughs> yeah. Don't screw up, though. <laughs> and I, I think so, the reason we do that is we're just reporting. This really isn't. Right. Per se, yeah. town meeting vote. We're, We're approving reporting this. to town That's meeting. That's right. You're right. Since You're right. Yes. six of us administrate, oversee, whatever. Right. That, you that, you yes. say that. Yeah. So this particular vote is this board controls, or this board with the manager controls these monies, allocates these monies, and so by taking this vote, we are actually allocating these monies. Right. And we will then report to town meetings for their, you know, endorsement. for their endorsement. endorsement. But right. yeah. Yes. Um, and I guess I should also say that this is document is based on what we believe our allocation is going to be with the federal government situation being what it is yeah. it may come back in a different number uh, and this number that was recommended to us front by the by the HUD and it is um, uh, no it's not HUD it's it is HUD, yeah. Yeah, it is HUD. and it's a 5% cut in uh, programmatically right could I ask one more question about it before so, we yep. um, estimated program income what's the nature of that sorry Estimated program income is there. So there's the allocation 969. So a lot of these programs. 69842. Yeah. So, in particular, uh, a whole bunch of different programs could get money back that comes in. In, in practice, we only have one, which is the, uh, the, the rehab program. Mm -hmm. And what happened, that program consists of the town loaning money or from okay. the federal government for uh, housing stock improvements, where okay. particularly economically uh, disadvantaged people would have a yeah. hard time otherwise hard time borrowing the money yeah and then the town helps them choose contractors and helps to manage the product and manage the scope of it yeah and then those people pay back the loan on the actual work done yeah and that is that payback is the um, is the income stream okay. thank you Steve um, one final thing um, that we discussed pretty extensively I think at the last meeting we had uh, not so much with public service but with rehab housing uh, public facilities improvements. We were really interested in seeing how the different groups could leverage their funding, mm -hmm. um, you know, for 
uh, more of a gain from say the state government or wherever else they may. And um, to anyone who's watching and wants to apply for this in the future, that would be great if you could explain um, how you could increase that funding and kind of be mm. pretty dynamic with uh, your actions. Then, no, oh, I'm sorry. my throat. Sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, on that, on that note, exactly what uh, Steve talked about, as part of the SIMS um, project, uh, the town manager has reminded us at the CDBG planning, uh, the developers made a one-time payment of $150,000 and that we have, uh, can uh, use for affordable housing purposes. In particular, uh, some of the top line items which were not funded at the level that they were from the Arlington Housing Authority and the Arlington Housing Corporation, um, in particular, there is this money available in the future that if someone comes in with a proposal that says, if you know, if you give me this money, I can come, I can raise another 10x that, you know, that type of leverage. Right. I think it's something that the board should really think about because mm -hmm. we do have that. It's kind of like CDBG money just because we control it, but it's not like CDBG money and it's not renewable. Any further discussion? Well, well just that this motion is obviously based on the estimate yes and that if there's a significant change in the estimate this would be brought back to us for where cuts further cuts would be made or additions would be made for our approval first i think that's correct right so i'm i'm not moving favorable action i'm moving approval approval no i'm not juliana doesn't like this no i just you know me i wanted to be in a box um the wording of the warner was the same as it's always been and maybe it should be different, but it is, you're asking town meeting to endorse right. this board's allocation. But we're actually also doing the allocation, I think, right now. We're approving it. We're asking them to endorse. If for some reason they didn't, it it's, it's already approved. I, right. so I, I so. think it's actually approval of the allocation along with a favorable action on the endorsement. Yes. Okay. I think. okay. That's right. my motion. And that was my second. Actually, I'm going to be a stickler, and I'm going to say we have to separate them because, because the town manager can't vote to endorse. So Ooh. let's do the allocation first. All those in favor of the, is that okay, Mr. Greeley? Yes, I'm just, <laughs> we get all this. I'm crushed for Adam, that's all. Yeah, well, he I'm gets sorry. the vote right now. All those in favor of the, uh, of the allocation as proposed, please say aye. Aye. Aye, six to zero. All right, Mr. Greeley. I move favorable action on the endorsement to town meeting. All those in favor, uh, who's the second? Or an article, whatever. Second. Second by Mr. Carroll. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you for indulging Move approval on all final votes and Second. comments. Second. Does anyone have any discussion on the final votes and comments? I have a question. Mrs. Kropelka. Yes. What's our schedule for printing and all that good stuff? Tomorrow. <laughs> Going to print on Wednesday, which means it'll be in the mail, which means town meeting members can expect it either Saturday or Monday. Excellent. So, if so town meeting members. Is there anything else going out in our envelope? Lots of things. Lots of things? Good. That, that's great. Mr. Greeley moved, I'm sorry. Second. Second by Mrs. Mahan. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, it's calendar time. Mm. Oh, and bear with me one moment. Well, I So our next scheduled meeting is 22nd. April 22nd, which is also town meeting. So town meeting starts Okay, town meeting starts at 8 and we're at 7. At seven. Okay. And evidently I'm supposed to give a speech or something. Yes. <laughs> evidently. You have been working on it already? Actually. You're nuts. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have to start in May, right? Setting dates in May? Yeah, does anyone have what's a can I uh, recommend 13 to 20? I know I can't be here on the 6th, but I don't know if the rest of the board feels that would be back to back, but 
We may still be in town meeting at this point. Oh, we yeah. will. Possibly. What was it? The and don't we, we meet every Monday during town meeting, correct? No. No, no, no. no not necessarily, but it, it really does work out to that most of the time, yeah. So yeah. does... I just I know I can't be here on the 6th, so... Yeah, 13 and 20 works for me. Same. Yeah. No, I'll put okay. it on the calendar. All right, Diane. Perfect. Okay, June. Do we need to meet How about twice, probably? Three and 17. Three and 17. Is that good with everyone? Uh, yes. Then normally over the summer we go to one in July and one in August. And if we need a second, we schedule it accordingly. Yeah. So July, I can't do the 8th. How about the 15th, middle of the month? People know what their summer vacations are? I don't yet. I don't. Know. The 15th would work. Should be fine. Okay. 15th, okay? Mm -hmm. In August. 19. I was going to say, how about 19? Just throwing it out. Yeah, no, but I'm yeah. just saying the 12 would be difficult for me. But 19 works for me. Okay. Okay. Oh. We have a problem on 19. July or August? Uh, August. I may, I'm going to be leaving to take my daughter to college on the West Coast. And details, maybe, details. I may be gone on 19. And I think I have Well, I, I, but Andrew could cover if that's the case. He can cover for me too. <laughs> okay. On the 5th? Yeah, well, you said not the 12th, right, Diane? Well, I can do it. I can, I can switch things. Do people want feel better with the 12th or the 5th? I'll let the rest of you all decide. See, so the 5th would be three weeks, which is certainly reasonable. Mm -hmm. I am tentatively away those first two Sorry? weeks anyways. The 5th or the 12th, I'm probably away, but... Mm -hmm. Whatever. Can we say the 5th for now? Why don't we say the 19th then? Well, he just said he's away oh. the 5th. You're not good on the 12th. Oh. And she's saying maybe not on the 19th, so. No, she's, Juliana's out on the 19th. Oh, you're definitely yeah. out. Yeah. So it just be. I, I'm pretty sure. I, I, I'm not exactly sure what day she has to be there. But we As I said, she's not sure, okay. right? Okay, all right. I thought you, yeah. But Adam, you definitely are out? Um, it would be between the 12th and the 19th, and I'm not certain. But I, I Andrew Flanagan can cover for me. Yeah. Let's do 19th. Totally plan on my account. Okay, 19. But Juliana really enjoys coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, yeah. Oh, yeah. Far as far. <laughs> Any further conversation in the meetings? We're happy with that set. Okay, let us take us to correspondence. Do Move I have a motion? Move a seat for Mrs. Mahan. Second. Any further discussion? Um, yes. Yes, go ahead. About the, um, from Joel Wong. Yes. Yeah. I would like to note that he brought a complaint against uh, the road in front of this building, and that is a private way, so we are not, um, <laughs> while I, I appreciate his concern, there is nothing we can do back on that, so if you're watching, Joel, um, yeah. thank you for bringing it to our attention, and I'm sorry. But, uh, I get the impression he knew that. Though. Yeah. yeah. I do, um, I remember, so he, the, the letter is about, uh, some. Uh, we, we sent a letter complaining about, uh, the town said, you have to remove the graffiti because as a as a uh, per our bylaw and i remember at the time that we passed that bylaw we were one of the things that some of the opponents of that rule said was that they're concerned that it wasn't uh, flexible enough and um i don't know if there's a I, I leave it to the town manager's discretion but if there's a way that we can make this you know especially when you have someone who's being a a, a good actor if we can figure out a way to be nicer to them as they go along. I don't, or maybe, I mean, obviously I don't know the whole story on this one, but I know just hearing that particular side of the story without having heard the whole story, I know that I would be, I probably would have written a similar letter, which is polite but not happy. Yeah. Maybe we maybe. could do like what they do with the um, snow shoveling bylaw, that the police officer visits them, says, just want to let you yeah. know there is a bylaw, this is what it states. Um, you know, I, I could be fining you or citing you now. But I just want to let you know, and then if the condition persists, do you want to speak to that? Or? I mean, I'd be more open to working with the chief. To right, whatever they do with. Softer, but not the actual. Okay. That's where I would stand. Yeah. I mean, I think to, to make this program work and to make sure the graffiti is removed. And everything. I mean, is your concern, or are there your concerns, that we actually enforce it after three days, or that we are, so, or that we are somewhat harshly saying we're going to enforce it? Uh. 
Uh, the, the, my concern is that this, is, if, that this would be the first, and I don't know the whole contact, if this was the first contact we had with the person, that would be where my okay, personal concern is. This is Rice, Ms. Rice. I just want to point out that I did know why I saw this inherent with the text of the bylaw. And as you point out, it's very strict. Yep. And the chief in this case did exactly what the bylaw requires. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There mm -hmm. would be ways to make it easier, but this is what the bylaw requires. I, okay. There may be a blog somewhere that gives an opinion that someone said at the time. I don't know what it would be or who what it was said, but anyway, <laughs> can't win them all. <laughs> you cannot win them all is all I can say. Uh, anything else? Oh, sorry, we have a motion for Mrs. Mahan that was seconded by I did. Mr. Caro. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 5-0. We don't have an executive session, so we can do our new business. Mrs. Kropelka. Ms. Rice. Mr. Chapdelaine. I have no new business. Kevin. Wow. Uh, I have uh, two things. Uh, I certainly want to thank uh, um, 8,600 or so who went out and voted on Saturday. Uh, and where, you know, um, I would like to uh, talk a little bit about question one, and I don't mean necessarily tonight, but I'd like to request that we put it on the agenda for the 22nd. And I, on that agenda, I'd like, like to recommend that this board put together a letter in which we send to Federal Highway and to Mass DOT strongly continuing our support for the project in East Arlington. Uh, the almost 50-50 vote, I think, was, uh, was uh, there was a lot of confusion around that vote. I had a number of people who told me that they voted yes, but they really still want the project, but they would prefer if they could have four lanes. And um, so with it, um, I, I, I would like us to, uh, move forward and request the funding from uh, Federal Highway and Mass DOT and ask uh, Adam to work with me and put together a letter that we'd bring in here on the 22nd to see if this board would support sending it to those two entities. I agree. We'll put it on the agenda. Thank you. And the other thing is, um, you know, the Housing Corp had their uh, walk and they dedicated a bench to my brother Brian down in front of the uh, Capitol Square, Capitol... The, the 32 units, anyhow. Capital uh, Square. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Capital Square, is that what it is? Uh, uh, but there's another name, because the, the, where the Capital Theater is, is technically we're calling that Capital Square as well, but the name of these, anyhow, it's 32 affordable housing <coughs> units. It's progressing along. Uh, Sheriff Peter Katusian was the guest speaker. Um, I'd say there might have been 100 people uh, in the walk who, who were doing the walk, so... Uh, uh, it was a great event, and on behalf of the Greeley family, we certainly thank them for remembering my brother Brian. That's it, sir. Good luck right. as chair. God Diane. bless you. I only screwed up like four times so far. <laughs> That's Diane, you're up. Um, first, I would just like to, um, through the town manager on behalf of the Board of Selectmen, congratulate Chief Ryan and his workforce on the rash of break-ins that we had along yes. in the uh, combined efforts of other cities and towns and um, being able to identify it with new technology, mapping and trending, and really um, hitting this hard, fast, and um, a lot of manpower, woman power put into this, a lot of coordination, and um, we see it on a piece of paper under seven or eight lines, but that's really an amazing task, and what policing will be like in the future because of technology, but also because of the fine staff we have there. And also, I'd like to congratulate Captain Flaherty on um, earning a well-deserved uh, scholarship to attend the International Association of Chiefs of Police um, that was very competitive um, so again it's a testament to our men and women in blue who protect us and then the only other two things I would have is one is oh I just booted down I received from Terry Bowes who's a lurker on the Arlington list and basically she said she lives near Parallel Street Playground growing family uh, she, uh, she's making a request that where there is a corresponding crosswalk around the rotary by Parallel Park in West Medford, if the town of Arlington could look at a similar crosswalk on the right side, which would be facing West Medford, where that rotary is. So if I could, if I could refer that to TAC. So I, I can tell you, I, the town engineer and I believe- Oh, did you already, you're already on TAC it? Have been working with DCR for more than a year now mm -hmm. on improvements to that rotary for pedestrian crossing. Mm -hmm. uh, but we can certainly How about if I provide her contact info um, to Mrs. Kropelka so the rest of the board has it as an FYI, and I'll also give it to you, Mr. Chapterling. And then the only other question I had was, 
jumping from town and school, I was hearing there may be some disparity that exists, or maybe just a mis nothing bad, a misunderstanding around the key swipe program. I'm hearing that you know both the town and the schools are using the key swipe program. They're starting to implement it in different structures. Are we doing that? Like I think we do it down the police station or something. Police station is the only building. Police station is the only one. What I was told was that um, that the town side. Basically, you go up and you put the thing against the door, and right there it records 2275, entered at 9 a.m., whatever. And that data exists there. But then there's another um, capacity, and I'm say hearing that the town does it and the school doesn't, or vice versa, that that information also gets backed up to a software program or somewhere else. So that if some reason, you know, somebody accidentally smashes that actual swipe that you're putting up against that contains all the information. One side has the backup that... There's a central location that right. records... Right. And it's, yeah. what I'm being told is not all buildings are being traded the same. So if somebody whacks that, um, say, at Town Hall, and we don't have it there, and it's not being backed up, then you lose all that information. So if you could just look into, I don't know if it's IT or whoever, um, and I'd be happy to, you know, explain what they're saying. <clears throat> but basically they're saying you can have two ways back up. The actual pad right yeah. there, it has the information, but if that gets destroyed, it's gone. Or the information's there, but it also is sent to a program that stores that. Yeah. I, I, I know I'm not saying it right. Yeah, so we've talked a little bit about that <laughs> at the Information Technology Advisory Excuse Committee, me. and I know that... Um, at least if I, I shouldn't say I know, I believe that some of it is related to different, basically it's easier to wire up some doors than others. Like some doors are easy to connect to the central and other doors are difficult. Depend and in particular, I know uh, that uh, they've been struggling with the high school. That's because what I'm of, Yeah, because the high school has so many different buildings and so many different doors and different infrastructure for each one of the buildings. that. That I believe that they were fr that they they attempted. To, I mean, they would have preferred to do a, a program that was unique. That was the same for all doors, but it wasn't because of the infrastructure. So I suspect that that's a part of what's going on. But we could certainly if we could just get an update more. that they say that this is the way it exists now, because a lot of yeah. adults are down there are saying that yeah, the main doors are wired, but other people know that if. It, could know uh, the doors that really should be maybe like we can't do that now but there's a two-year plan three-year okay. plan four-year plan to phase it in so thank you do you think we could have uh we'll yeah, okay. and no rush on that yeah. i mean okay everything you're all set joe thank you i just have uh, three three quick items um firstly i wanted to mention that <laughs> right before our meeting uh, mr chaplain and i uh, did have the opportunity to go down to the arlington center for the arts and attend the uh Arlington Cultural Council's um, award ceremony for their grant recipients. And I think on the cultural side of the ledger, it's kind of a microcosm of the, the, the really difficult task that, that you and Mr. Bird and others undertook with CDBG. Um, they presented uh, 15 grant recipients who, who were the recipients collectively of $10,000 that they have to, do, to dole out, that the allotments from the state have gone down in, um, uh, consistently from, from year to year. Um, it was really an exciting you know, they said that they're also that their number of applications went up this year. I think they said it doubled, I think they said, over last year, um, partly on the strength of the uh, Arlington Alive uh, gathering. But they, I mean, there were, um, <coughs> you know, performing arts groups that, that received visual arts, initiatives in our parks. So, I mean, it was really exciting to see. And, and I, I got a sense that a lot of these groups are indeed leveraging funds from elsewhere, and um, it, it was a great event to go to. It was great to see the, the energy um, uh, in, in the room, and uh, as we all know, we all confirm the appointments to the, to the council, so I think they're all to be congratulated for the, for the work uh, there. Um, another issue that I've, I've been kind of drawn into um, over the past week or two, um, I think we all know that um, one of the past recipients of uh, Cultural Council uh, grant funding um, it was a group that uh, did the mural in the Heights uh, along, it was Dearborn Academy students had worked on the mural. And I was contacted by some <laughs> folks who were distressed, I think yeah. is, it's fair to say that, that um, you know, with the new tenant coming in, yes. the, the mural has had to be uh, dis disassembled, basically. Um, th there's a great tenant coming in, it's Mass Commission for the Blind, they're opening up a, a retail store, I think it's, it's slated to be opened <coughs> around uh, Memorial Day or, or such. But, um, you know, given the experience, and there really wasn't, 
I think folks hadn't envisioned on that project that there might be a sudden uh, change like that. Even though you can say it's temporary, it wasn't envisioned. Um, I actually uh, referred this over to our new cultural commission, and they're going to work on, on looking at that, lessons learned from, from that experience, and see if there's um, a real positive project that can come out of this that will both welcome right spot to the heights mm -hmm. and, and also just, just address how do, how do we deal with it, making sure that we memorialize properly um, uh, you know, pieces of public art um, like that. And just the last thing I wanted to mention is, is something that um, was only tangentially related to official duties but took place in the town hall here yesterday. Um, Mr. Chaplain mentioned earlier that our faith communities have gotten very um, involved with uh, working with the police department on the gun buyback. There were about uh, probably about a dozen of our of our churches got together along with Temple Isaiah, one of our Buddhist meditation centers, and invited um, really the nationally renowned um, <coughs> writer, commentator, teacher, uh, and preacher uh, Jim Wallace was here to talk about searching for the common good and the inspiration that public officials find in their own beliefs in, in seeking the public good and how do, we, how do we define that. There were 150 or 200 people from all over town were down there. Some other public officials were there as well as uh, representatives. And it was, um, I don't know if it was intentional, but on the day after um, a, an election that was sometimes divisive, it was really a breath of fresh air. And um, I, I think... Um, I think a lot of people felt that, and, and I think we owe them a gratitude for that. Uh, you know, some places do a unity breakfast the day after. This just happened to hit on the, on the right day. And um, they, they invited in a lot of our nonprofit groups, the Boys and Girls Club, and a lot of the organizations that are lesser known, just to let people know ways that they can get out in the community and, and, and make a difference in, in town. So I, I want to thank them for that, because I think it was a great, um, great public service. Steve. <clears throat> Thank you. I, uh, I only have one thing, and it is that, uh, well, last meeting I mentioned that the Master Planning Committee will be meeting the first week of every month for the next three years, and that was last week that we met again. And um, I, just to save the date for Saturday, June 1st, um, we're still trying to iron out the details on, you know, time and where, you know, high school has been mentioned, high school has been mentioned, um, but we're going to do another um, the community get together to kind of build on our first session and I uh, see you know what you know how the implementation process will go and we uh it's really nice to see how community engaged there and they want to keep everyone active and involved in it so if you could just save the date for June 1st it's a Saturday and it will be a hopefully a nice day okay. thank you thank you I don't have anything move to adjourn, move to adjourn. Second. all those in favor Hi. Hi. Aaron, put out your clicker. All Anybody got a score? Aye, aye. We're adjourned. <laughs> Have they tipped off? Anybody? Yeah, I know. Yeah.